Mr. Rose, if I can, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Madam Secretary, it's good to see you again. And, you know, I want to start off, first of all, I don't doubt your love of this country, and I understand that you're serving it. That's not what this is about. But what this, uh, this is about here is solving problems and saving lives and upholding our values. My district, Staten Island and South Brooklyn, has lost an ungodly number of people to the opioid epidemic. My district has lost an ungodly number of people to terrorist attacks. So as we look at the facts, I want to make sure that we're operating on the same plane here. First of all, is it true that your data, your own department's data, shows that the vast majority of drugs coming through the border, heroin, methamphetamine, fentanyl, are found at ports of entry? Uh, where we can detect it, yes, sir. Uh, in most cases, it's over 80%. Right, but I just want to clarify, we don't know what's coming between well, so, ports of entry. So th that's what I want to get into next. Okay. Now, you could easily say in response to that, that's true, but that's just what we're measuring. Do you have any sense, then, of across the entire border, across our enti the, the entire country, hypothetically, theoretically, based off your simulations, what percentage of our drugs is coming in from ports of entry or any other sources? What is the breakdown? The breakdown, and I'm happy to show you the, the modeling. We'd love to come mm -hmm. in and chat more. Uh, what, we, what I can tell you is the instances of interdiction of illicit drugs has gone up across the board. So it's gone up at the ports of entry thanks to uh, new technology, but it's also unfortunately gone up between ports of entry. When you try to compare the two, the majority of the drugs continues to come through the ports of entry, but we're seeing the amount increase between the ports. So the vast majority are still coming in through the ports of entry based off these models. Yes, and thank you for the NII equipment. Yep. So then what my question is, is what are your priorities based off that model? Mm -hmm. And please, please, for the respect of all of our intelligence, because I'm doing my best to respect yours and your service, what are your priorities based off that model to address fentanyl streaming into our country and killing our kids. So what we do, uh, we look at it from a risk-based perspective, today's threats, but we also have to anticipate where the flows go tomorrow, which is why between the ports is concerning. But as you know, we also look at the mail, so we've used the authorities that we have to uh, work to identify the fentanyl coming from China. Uh, we're working with China on, uh, they've agreed to make illegal some of the precursors to fentanyl, so we're working there. Uh, we have border enforcement security teams uh, throughout the nation where we work with state and locals on investigations to really get at the cartels and the trafficking within the country, and then we work at the source through the National Targeting Center with our international partners to ensure as much as we can that but, what's... But what I, what I did ask, and again, I'm trying not to be up here, is in terms of based off this model and right. the fact that you're dealing with limited, or not zero sum amount of funds, your priorities, my understanding, are mail, ports of entry. I did not hear you say, though, that my priority to prevent the children in Staten Island and throughout this country from dying from overdoses is the border, is the border wall. I, so I, 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 wanna, I, I want to understand here, because that's what we've declared a state of emergency around. Yeah, well, that's what we declared it around. So I want to understand how many less children will be dying because of this border wall. And it, I do not understand the math or the science or the planning behind this. That's my issue. I do not understand how this leads to any positive effect on the opioid epidemic, to any positive effect in terms of our efforts at counterterrorism. What models are this based off of? We're happy to come share with you in detail, sir, but in general, the impedance and denial prevents that smuggling through that part of the border where we have physical barrier. So the criminal then has a choice. They can try to smuggle it through the ports of entry where we're also increasing technology, or they go and find another part of the border that is unsecured. So you think that our current stance with this additional investment at ports of, ports of entry is satisfactory at this point? No, sir. I think it helps us at the ports of entry, but what we see is the increase of interdiction of drugs between ports of entry. How much more money do you need at our ports of entry? Uh, right now, we have this wonderful influx uh, to get NII machines, so I'd love to get back to you. We're going to see how, how much more that improves our ability to interdict. Thank you.